All right, so we did hear uh, Sage and John, you guys were actually talking about it. You basically did my book talk earlier when you guys were talking. I was like, oh, great. So working up, that's how I joined after one more season. So I appreciate that. But uh, no disclosures really for this talk. Um, looking at the SI joint, obviously, looking at the overview of it, dyarthrotic joint, you know, extensive leg network of ligaments and stabilize the SI joint. As we uh, as we talk about motion with it, you know, uh, initially, obviously, everybody was saying, no, it doesn't move, doesn't move, you know, and then obviously Boyle proved me wrong on that and proved a lot of people also, but it has been shown, obviously, up to really six millimeters of movement. So it's just an image, obviously, looking at you know, these sensitive ligaments, right? sacral spinae, sacral tuberous, you know, the anterior sacral yeah, ligaments overall. And um, in SIG, we're talking about this yesterday, and the, you know, the wording that's associated with this is, you know, nutation, which is really the anterior tilt, which is basically, you know, your maximum flexion of the hips themselves. And then you have the counter nutation, which is basically the extension, which is, you know, increased with, you know, lying down supine. And then you have, you know, reciprocal forces and your shear force, uh, which, basically transmit vertically. And this is usually with, uh, you know, single leg function, things like that. Uh, so SI, dysfunct SI joint dysfunction. And this talk is really looking at, you know, in relation to lumbar fusion itself. Um, I'm gonna touch on both of those, really lumbar fusion and, and with a patient that obviously hasn't had a lumbar fusion as well. So, you know, is, is related to, you know, abnormal motion, whether that's hypermobility or hypermobility. Um, are we, you know, not paying attention, obviously, to the overall alignment of the patient and actually causing those problems? Um, in the incidence looking at, it's really uh, accounts for about 27% of low back pain and fourth most common cause.